Julie in Philadelphia, Matthew in Philadelphia. Oh, wow, you guys are neighbors. Um, we've got a Jennifer in Houston. We have a Kate in Brooklyn and Isabel from DC. Um, Aki is here. Suzanne is calling in from Reno. Uh, wow, Alex is joining us from Germany. Alex, we happen to have a location in Berlin. Um, Ati is here and she is calling in from Oregon. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Perfect. Um, great. So it looks like we are now live on Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and get the call rolling. So thank you everybody so much for joining us today. We know that today is a busy day for everybody and you do not have to take time out of your day to be here with us. So we do appreciate you spending this time with us today. So I am Heather Doyle. I'm going to be your host for today's call and joining us is our featured guest, Maria Bailey. Now a little bit about Maria. Maria is an IPEC certified professional coach. She's a graduate of our program and she is the founder of Epium, where she helps people get confident on achieving their career goals without risking their finances, their quality time with their family, and so that they can still have fun while they transition into whatever their version of success is. Maria is really passionate about advocating for diversity and has supported over 600 people since 2017 through one-to-one -one coaching, her group programs, working with corporations and organizations alike. And some of those organizations include Google, Shiseido, and 3M. So Maria's got a lot of experience for you guys to take advantage of today. Now, what I do want you guys to keep in mind is that Maria is here to answer your most pressing questions about coaching, coach training, how coach training has impacted both her personal and professional worlds, and anything else along those lines that you guys have got in mind. Today is all about you and Maria. I am just here to facilitate. With that in mind, if you guys see me looking away from the screen, I am still fully present. I'm reading your questions so that I can ask those questions of Maria. So don't get distracted if it looks like I'm distracted. I'm here, I'm present, okay? Now, with that in mind, I do want everybody, I really want to encourage you to take advantage of our time with Maria today. And what that means is, please ask questions that only she can answer about her experiences and the wisdom that she has to share about us regarding becoming a successful coach. All of those kinds of logistical questions about the IPEC program, how long it is, what's included, all of that stuff, those are great questions too. But because we want to really honor Maria's time, I'm probably going to direct those questions to our IPEC admissions coaches and our admissions team. So those are great questions, but if we don't answer those in today's call, that's why. And I'll be letting you guys know how to get in touch with the admissions team at the end of this call, okay? Now you might be wondering, that's all great, Heather, but how do I ask Maria a question? So that's a good question. If you're joining us on Zoom, what you're going to do is you're going to use that little folder that says Q&A on it, the same one where you typed in the location of where you're joining us from today. If you type a question in there, I can see it, and then I can ask Maria that question. If you're joining us on Facebook, just type your question right into the comments, and Suzanne, who's behind the scenes running the technology, she's going to grab those questions and shoot them over to me over on my other screen. So if you see me looking over here, that's what I'm doing, okay? Um, also, just a general reminder, we're going to have people joining us from all over the world because IPEC is a global organization. We have locations in the Netherlands, the UK, Germany, Canada, and the USA. So please do let us know where you're calling in from today because your, the answer to your question might be slightly different based on wherever it is that you are actually located geographically, okay? So without any further ado, let's get this party started. Maria, welcome. It is so nice to have you here. While Good we wait morning. For, while we wait for the questions to roll in, would you maybe mind sharing with us a little bit about you and your journey and, you know, what you're doing now as a coach? Yes, absolutely. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, well, as you know, my name is Maria. I live in San Francisco, California. I am originally from Brazil. I've been living in San Francisco for seven years. And IPEC changed my life completely. So whatever you want to ask me, feel free. I love talking about IPEC. Everybody who asked me like where I got certified, if I am certified, I highly recommend the, the school. And it is, it is part of not only my professional life, but definitely my personal life. Everything has changed and for the better. So I'm really happy to be here today. 
Awesome. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just so everybody knows, when we do have a graduate on, all we're doing is we're asking them to come and spend that time with us to answer your questions. Um, we're not paying Maria to be here when she says that she loves to talk to people about IPEC because IPEC changed her life. That's the truth. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. So Astrid has got a question. Hello, Astrid out there. Um, Astrid would like to know, when did you realize this is the particular area that you wanted to focus on as part of your life coaching business? Well, that's a great question. Um, it was really a process. When I started IPEC, I wanted to work with um, small businesses. Uh, it was really different than what I do now. And along the process with the school and when I started to uh, seeing uh, clients, I realized that I, I don't know, that I wanted to work with a different kind of uh, client that they were like, they didn't have businesses. And also something that happens really natural is people will come to you, even though you're like maybe offering like a business coach, a lot of people will come to you for a life coach. And then you will feel confident to see them, to help them to go on their transformational uh, path. So this is really what happened. People started to come for me uh, for career advancement, for career, you know, with career questions. And I was like, oh, I think I like this better than business. So it was really natural. I, I didn't realize, I mean, I did realize, but people told me first, uh, it wasn't really a choice, but I love what I do. And it makes a lot of sense. And I understand why people come to me uh, for career and life coaching and not as much as business. No, I love that because one of the things about IPEC that I'm always telling people is IPEC actually teaches you to coach anyone, anywhere, anytime on any subject. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the program, we're always telling people, don't worry about the specialty, just go coach everybody. Yes. Because that's how your specialty will magically appear to you. So it sounds like that's exactly what happened for you. It is, it is, yes. And it's, awesome. it's also something that is not, you know, set in stone. Like you, you can offer a career and people will come for you for life coaching, for transformational coaching, for, I don't know, for holistic coaching. It, it's really, really natural. Like you, you don't have to worry about this. It sounds like it makes your day really um, diverse too, because you're yes. not just on one topic. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And it's really fun. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Alexandra is wanting to know, what are the main positive aspects about studying at IPEC? Ooh, we would need like a day of webinar here. <laughs> so many positives, but um, I think uh, the length of the program helps you not to be overwhelmed because it's a lot of content. And that's why I love IPEC so much. It's not a weekend uh, boot camp where you're gonna be a certified coach, certified coach. So the length of program was really positive. Uh, I had time to digest everything, to integrate them, you know, all the, the transformations and energy. Um, because throughout the program, we do have the sessions, right? The one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I think I had almost 30 sessions, the coaching sessions. So it was a lot of personal transformation, which was definitely a very positive uh, side on IPEC. It was a huge differential. So to be honest, I had no idea when I signed up, I was like, oh yeah, I have coaching sessions for myself, cool. Um, um, the availability of everybody on IPEC uh, when you have your classes, everybody's available. If we have questions, and I'm a person who asks a lot of questions, every single email, in a few hours, I had the answer. Um, so everything is really organized, even though it's a lot of content, it's easy to find online. If you can't find, you can ask someone, you have a lot of peers. Now I have a lot of friends, because after the, the, the classes, I made a lot of friends, and so, a lot of positivity, yeah. Awesome. David is is wanting to know, I think this is a good follow-up question to that. Um, David's wanting to know, how easy or difficult has it been to transition from your previous career to your coaching career? Because what you were just talking about is like, there's so much content, time to digest it, 
you start out with peers, they turn into your friends, your community. So then like that transition point. So that's why I think this is a good follow up. And David's wondering how easy or difficult has that transition been from your previous career into your coaching career? All right. Well, good morning, David. I, I think I had like one of the most, the easiest transitions ever. I was really frustrated and tired of what I was doing. So I started IPAC and in one, I, yeah, in one month I quit my job and I was like, this is it. I know exactly what I wanna do now. And I'm, I'm gonna figure out this thing. And I'm not gonna work anymore because I knew my work would, you know, slow down my, my business building process and and that was it like I think it was a month or it was a week and then my boss asked me to stay a month longer and I was like okay I will be cool with you I'm gonna stay here for a month but it was really easy to me I had a lot of support um on my family as well but that's just to say that I felt so confident with the skills I got on my first module for example but I was like, no, I can do that. And I had a client after that. So I got my first client very after the first module, I think like one week, 10 days after, after the first module. Wow. So just to clarify, you're saying you quit your job and started your coaching business while you were in the program. Yes. Not waiting until you got certified. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> when I got certified, I, I was already like running, running like, yeah. Easily. Fantastic. No, I mean, yeah. that makes total sense because you can start taking on clients after you've attended the very first module. So I love that you were just like, oh, nope, this makes perfect sense. This is exactly what I want to do with my life. And I'm just going to go do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, sorry, as I pick out a question, more roll in and then it scrolls. So hang on one sec because I had a really good one teed up. <laughs> um, Okay, Abdul would like to know, would you please elaborate as to how IPEC provided you with support in starting your business? Sure, um, IPEC has like, um, especially online, we have, I don't, I don't remember now the, the name of the session online, but it's like uh, how to start your business. So he has all the basics, how to have a business card, a website, uh, what do you say on a sales call, um, so it's really like the basis, the basics for you to get running. And I'm pretty sure that on the last module, we also talk a little bit about, you know, how to make this a business. Um, just to clarify, I, it's, we don't go like as in depth as if you have like a coaching business, because not everybody in IPEC wants to have a business. And I think this is more than fair to have coaching content and our business co uh, content but we do have like the basics and it's more than enough for you to to start your business for sure i love that you um made the distinction too that not everybody who comes here wants to be an entrepreneur um because i think sometimes people forget that that the coach training is for if you want to be an entrepreneur but it's also bringing the skills into your current employment um, yes. Or even if you're not employed into your current life, whatever it is that you're doing. So um, thank you so much for bringing up that, that distinction. Mm -hmm. um, Julie would like to know, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you started your journey? It's a good one. Mm -hmm. I don't, nothing. <laughs> you know, really, it was um it was so grateful to be surprised by you know like the whole process uh it helped me to surrender to the process to enjoy the process not to get anxious about the process and everything it's new every single class every single um module so there is nothing that i wanted to, yeah no nothing I like that I was just surrendering to the process and surprised me. <laughs> it sounds like things just really organically unfolded for you when yes. you started really following your intuition and knowing the path that you wanted to go on. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it was really intuitive. I learned about IPAC one week before my first module. So I had like four days to figure out everything, everything. 
and my admissions coach was amazing. He was really, really helpful. Uh, we had like a time zone difference, but like he made it happen. So it was definitely really intuitive. So there's nothing that I wish I knew before. We, I've seen a lot of questions come in with the same vein around how did you get your first client or clients? So would you mind sharing with us a little bit about, you know, how the, just at the very beginning, how did that happen for you? Or what did you do that would help um, those clients find you? Uh-huh. So my very first question was like a, a referral kind of. Um, one of my peers, my IPEC peers, had a sister on the first module. And she was like, I really liked you. I think you got potentials. Do you want to be my coach? And that was it. So she was like there with me on my first module. And then the second one was uh, posting about coaching and my experience and things I liked on Facebook. And she reached out in a private message like, hey, I'm really interested in what you're doing. I'm looking for a coach. And this is it. And it's still like nowadays, most of my coaches, uh, my client coaches, I would say 9%, they are, um, I don't know, organic. I don't use advertisement. Um, they don't go to my website. It's really sitting down and having conversations, networking events, dinner, brunches, um, just, just telling what I do and, and this is it. And it was something that I also learned with IPEC and I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, nah, there's no way I, I will, you know, have a full-time uh, practice without um, advertisement, without social media, without a website. And this is exactly how it happens. A lot of referrals and just be passionate and honest about what do I do, how do I do, and why do I do. And I think also being brave and confident and just yes. getting out there and doing it is what yes. I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's easy to be confident when you like what you do and when you know what you do. This is, I think this is why I love IPEC so much because in a one year journey, I became so much more confident personally because of the sessions, because um, you know, like everything that you go through and also professionally because the content is really in depth, so. It's easy. Now it's easy to be confident. Oh, wow. Yay. I'm just going to, on behalf of IPEC, thank you. <laughs> that was so nice. Sure. 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 I've got a question here from Livia, who also wants to give you a shout out. She says she lives in Toronto, but she is also Brazilian, as Yay. you are, and she's been living abroad for seven years. So shout out from Livia. Um, and Livia would like to know, why did you choose IPEC among all the other schools? What was the main reason why you chose it? Um, it was a referral. It was actually a YouTuber I follow on YouTube, of course. And I really like, you know, uh, what he say, what he says. And I don't know, like it really, he, the way in whatever he shares, um, his content actually on YouTube it makes a lot of sense for uh, what I believe. And I was doing some research and he came up in one of the videos was him uh, talking about his certification with IPEC and how amazing it was for him. It was like, okay, so I know this guy is, is serious. And so it, I, it was a referral. Yeah. Wow. And okay. I was also looking for something that wouldn't be like a, a weekend long or a month long because I know that coaching is really serious. And when IPEC said like, oh no, you're gonna take like around nine months, seven months. I was like, okay, so this is not gonna be like a, an anything, like, oh yeah, an any, whatever. A rubber stamp. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely gonna leave with some skills. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> um, Scott has got a really interesting question. He says, we understand what works for you may not work for others due to people being different. So it is good to understand where you are, are coming from. With that in mind, you seem to be quite confident in your abilities. Can you also describe some of the natural strengths that you possess that you feel helped you start your own business and makes you successful as a coach? Ooh, nice. Right? Mm -hmm. Good one, Scott. Um, yeah, good one. Thank you, Scott. Um, I like to say that I was born a coach. 
Oh, and, and it's true. Like I always had the passion to help people. If you come to me and say like, I have a problem, my mind will crazy already. Like, oh, so let's figure out a solution. And this is the way I've been my whole life. So I think this is like one of my natural strengths is to be a problem solver or, you know, like you, I really like to organize things, to strategize things. And that helped me a lot to, to once I got like the real techniques and understood how I could really help people rather than just tell them what to do. Because in the past, that's what I used to, to do, trying to help people. Uh, then I became really confident that I could help people. Uh, but that was always a passion. I always wanted to help people. And starting with my sisters and my family and my friends. Uh, so when I learned the techniques to really help people, to, to help people with efficiency and knowing that what I was doing was right and would give them, bring them results, uh, that made me, made me even more confident. It sounds like um, when the word unleashed kept coming to me as you were saying that. It yes. sounds like IPEC just sort of like like unleashed you, but you're like, I know I'm passionate. Just give me the tools. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was exactly what happened, yeah. Um, Livia has, I would say one question, except there are three and they really do go really well together. So I don't want to overwhelm you. And, and in coaching, I know we call it stacking questions, but we can get so nicely together. I'm gonna go ahead and put all three out there so that you can you can kind of answer all of them in one. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, great. So Livia is is asking, did you achieve your financial goals yet? Did it take more effort than you thought to get there? And could you share a little bit of your experience in building your business? And I would assume that that last one is as it relates to like you setting a goal and achieving it. Okay, so let's go one by one. Okay. The first one is on my financial goals. Yes, but I always change my financial goals, right? Once I hit my financial goals, or sometimes I, I have a number of client goals. Then I go in and I change like, okay, so instead, I don't know, six, I'm going to have eight or, you know, or 10. Uh, so yes, I had. Uh, and what is the second question? The second one was, did it take more effort than you thought to get there? And I'm going to add into that. Did it take more effort or time than you thought to reach that first goal? Yes, it took more time than what I expected. I'm a really anxious person. Uh, so <laughs> I tend to set up goals that are sometimes unrealistic, to be honest. Uh, so it took more time than what I expected. Um, not necessarily more effort. I think if you still, if you keep yourself open to the process, it's easier. Sometimes I'm too stubborn, like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm going to do, you know, until I get there. And sometimes it's not what you have to do. You just have to be more flexible or let people help you, with, with, which is something that I've learned with IPEC. If you ask for help, things get much, much easier. And so we took more effort but not because it is difficult because i was being difficult that's the the real thing that's the, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the truth yeah <laughs> it's the truth but it's also really adorable <laughs> it wasn't more difficult i was being difficult <laughs> yes i was being difficult. <laughs> no it's and funny I'm it reminds me um one of the ipec trainers said to me a similar thing of you know i had the goal of like two clients right and the IPEC trainer was like, well, what if the universe had in mind of giving you 10? Yeah. You just told the universe not to give you eight more. So that that's totally in alignment of like, it's not difficult. I was being difficult. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and her, the last part of her question is, could you share a little bit of your experience in building your business? Yes. So once I finish module three, I decided to hire a coach. I already have a few clients, but not enough to, you know, to pay all the bills and everything. So I want to look, okay, so now that I'm done with my content, um, I'm going to hire a business coach. And it was the best thing I've, I've done ever because I already had the content and the confidence and was 
really someone to help me to how to introduce myself as a coach, what to say, what not to say, uh, how to um, how to um, get workshop gigs or, you know, like how really to, to do what I wanted to do and how to start making my practice a business. Um, so after that, I had two or three other coaches, business coaches, but to be honest, that that's how I, that's why I say like I was being difficult. I didn't need them. I could just stop with the very first one because everything I learned there, um, it was really really useful. The other ones I hired just to keep me going, to keep me accountable, and to you know to keep it rolling. But it is something that you do not need. Once you learn how to you know, how to build your business, you just have to keep rolling. Like you have a friend to be your accountable partner and you will be good to go. Um, so this is it. No, I love that. I'm so happy you brought that up because I think sometimes, and this is a great, I have another question lined up that I think this is gonna lead very perfectly into. Um, like you said earlier in the conversation, not everybody who's here at IPEC is looking to start their own business. And we're a coach training program we're not a how to build a business program because a coaching business could be the same as a carpet cleaning business. That's like, you're an entrepreneur, it's building a business and there's just certain things that go with that. So yeah, IPEC definitely gives you enough to like start growing that business. And then the additional things, whatever works for you, in your case, hiring additional business coaches, or you could just have a friend now that, you know, you know that to keep you accountable and keep you going. Um, yeah. And so I think that's the perfect transition to Matthew's question, which I'm like in love with this question. Um, good one, Matthew. So Matthew wants to know, how have you personally grown having gone through the IPEC program and working with your coaching clients? Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think one of the best things that I learned with IPEC is, is, is because it's still, um, asking for help, uh, asking for help. It, it was huge. It changed my life so much. I used to be the one that, um, you know, like that person that wanted to figure out everything, you know, by herself, uh -huh. it was me. And I just learned the power of asking for help. It's huge. And, you know, help you to go much further, much easier, and uh, so asking for help was one. Um, and allowing people on their processes. Uh, I used to be really pushy. Not that I am not now, but uh, I'm much better. I'm in a measurable, manageable, you know, uh, phase. So allowing people, like, it, just leave it. If it's not the time for that person to start on a journey, um, so then it's not, and it's okay. And I couldn't understand this before IPEC. But mm. in IPEC, you don't even, you do, don't just learn that, you experience that. And this is what it is amazing. Like you will feel that you can ask for help, that you are also on your process. You are also feel that and experience and see and, and witness people going on their own process. And even though you think or feel that that person could be much further, everybody's taking, you know, their their time. And this is really beautiful. So I think it was ask for help and allow people to be and do on their own time. Now, I know that um, you took the leap as you said, right after module one, you were like done with my professional working life. I'm starting my business. I'm in like just full steam ahead, but I'm seeing a theme in some questions. I've got some coming in from different sources, emailed in and the chat um, around the financial piece. And they're asking in different ways, but there definitely seems to be a theme around, you know, um, when you took the leap, how did you know that financially you were going to be making enough money to like support that leap? Um, and I, I, and I definitely want to speak to your journey, but I think there's an underlying piece here that I'm kind of calling forth the coach in you out because the different questions that are coming in, I've got one that's like, what kind of market research did you do on the financials to know? Like I got another one. How did you set your goal and how did you achieve it? 
And there's an underlying piece here for people that I think that they want to make the leap. How would you suggest that they make their leap when there's this under this some fear here around it, it comes comes back to can I really be successful and how do I be financially successful? And it's you guys, they're great questions because we all have responsibilities. We've got to take care of our family and ourselves and keep a roof over our head. So I would love to hear from Maria, like what was her personal journey on that? And what would you, I hate to use the word advise because as coaches, we don't give advice, but you know, what advice would you give to the audience out there regarding any type of fear that they have of making that, that financial leap? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's not a really an advi advice, it's, you know, like sharing um, what I learned. It's take your time and your time can be like me one month and your time can be five years and that's more than fine. Uh, if in five years you can only see one client a year, that's more than fine. Um, and every everybody is different. If you're thinking about making a leap it will be different for you i nobody can guarantee that you know like it will be in two months or in two years uh just make sure that you are consistently working for your leap in order to get there and uh and and this is it there's nothing much to say like if you if you think you need extra help on building a business uh, going, maybe hire some professionals, uh, maybe go to another school to learn business, not to learn coaching. Um, but everybody has like a really different journey. And also because everybody has different um, necessities and goals, sometimes your goal is like 60,000 a uh, year and your someone else will, will be 120K and some people will be thinking in a million. So just work consistently towards your goal and do whatever you think it's best for you at that time. Love it. That's so yeah. perfect. Thank you. Cause yeah, it is just the consistently taking one step. It doesn't have to be a huge leap. It could be a small step. It's whatever's right for you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I love that. Yeah. But um, the very first thing you need is to learn how to be a coach. So <laughs> <laughs> good point. <laughs> if you want to coach, it, has, it is helpful to have the skill set of coaching. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that, with that said, it, this is a good time to ask Isabel's question. Isabel is asking, do you feel like you have a lot of tools under your belt to be able to work with different, um, with different personalities and different people? Yes. I do, uh, and now I am at the point that I can also choose which personalities I want to because be out of experience, right? Uh, I had clients that I, didn't bring me joy, to be honest, and I had clients that I loved that I would pay them to work with me again because it was so amazing. Uh, so after you know some time, you will experience like, oh, these people bring me more joy. I like to work with this kind of people, this kind of people, not that much. Um, but I definitely can work with everybody. It's not that, that I choose because it nurtures me personally. Because when I am in a session, I am 60 minutes um, focus on someone else, giving my whole energy to someone else. So I want to make this 60 minutes the most valuable and the most energizing and the most nurturing to myself as well, because otherwise I'm just drained. Wow. Um, I love that you brought up that there are going to be clients that you're like, yeah, that's not, that, that doesn't bring me joy. So yes. I'm not going to work with that type of person again, but you're perfectly capable of doing so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Alexandra wants to give you a shout out. She says, great answer. So thank you. <laughs> um, Livia, I've got another one here from Livia. Um, that's our uh, fellow Brazilian in Toronto. Um, nice. She is wanting to know, do you think that IPEC really delivered on what they promised slash advertised in terms of content? Oh, beyond. You will be surprised how much work you're gonna do if you 
say yes. <laughs> it is a lot. You don't, you have no idea. It's, it's so much content that there's a checklist so you don't get lost on everything you have to do. Let me get my, so this is like one of my folders. <laughs> yeah. One of my folders. And this is what the one I use the most. So it is a lot of content. Yeah. Awesome. Um, David is wanting to know what opportunities have you experienced sen since attending IPAC? Um, a lot. Um, my two most favorite are uh, serving my community. And when I say my community, the Brazilian community here in the Bay area. Um, when I moved here, I kind of promised myself that I would be good enough or get to the point where I could offer something back to my community and help them to grow. So this is something that I, I you know, that I pack brought me uh, being confident enough to say, hey, if you want someone to support and help you, I'm here. And the second one, it, it was like a, a dream that came true. I always wanted to be a Googler. I think everybody, me and everybody else. And <laughs> in the middle of my program, I, I don't know, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I just, I, I found myself uh, hosting workshops inside Google here in the Bay Area. And wow. it was because of IPEC, because I was confident enough to say like, hey, I wanna take this training and the training was inside Google and then they were looking for someone to host and then I could host for Brazilians and also like English speakers. So these two opportunities, I will, you know, take with me forever. So it sounds like one of the things that you just said about the, the confidence piece, it sounds like by going through IPEC, cause you touched on um, two big things being learning how to ask for help and also learning how to receive the help and the opportunities. But it sounds like going through the program also really helped you see yourself in a different light and be like, I am confident, I can do this. Like mm -hmm. maybe give you a boost too. Yes, yes, no, definitely. My confidence is like through the roof now, yeah. Wow, Yeah. great, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Um, Addie's asking a question and I've seen a couple other in the same theme. Um, Addie's specific question is, have you found it helpful while pulling all of this together to have a coach yourself? But I'm also seeing other questions, um, regarding the, the support and the community. So I think those are kind of interlinked because you can have a coach yourself, but there's also that IPEC community. So, um, can you maybe speak to a little bit about like what do you find the most supportive and and in in which ways do those two things support you the most like do they are they different are they the same okay uh so we're starting with my back community um it is an amazing community because it's really responsive we do have a community on facebook and i think everybody here like it's part of a group on facebook where you post something and nobody answers and it's so frustrating and disappointing but every single question i had and you know like and i post on facebook i don't know i always receive like at least five six different answers and people saying like hey if you want send me a private message i've been through this or i have this material that can help you um and even if it's not your question you just like go trolling on um uh the community you can find like questions like oh yeah i never asked this myself or yeah maybe this will be helpful for this and that so the community is really really strong and helpful and other than the community we also have like emails so i still like sending emails to epic like hey how do i do this hey do I, how do i do that and i it's always like really really helpful um and on getting a coach it's, it's really different than just have the community uh the community i can be really specific this is a specific my problem with this client uh, on this session and that will help me but if a 
with a coach, um, I don't have to be that specific. I can be more like, oh, the concept of it, this is, you know, it's not working for me. And uh, just, I don't know, bring, bring bigger things or bigger questions or bigger traumas and something that is bigger than the community. The community is really focused. So I'm hearing you say the community helps answer some really specific focus questions, but when you work one-on-one -on -one and you are receiving coaching, that's really about overcoming your own internal blocks and your yes. gremlins and, and breaking through those barriers that might be holding you back in some way, shape, or form. Yes, exactly. Nice. And yeah, um, Addie, uh, all good coaches have a good coach. I have a coach. <laughs> yes, I have a coach. Yes, yes. It's a must. Great question. Um, as we're coming to the close of the call, and I'm still going to ask some of these questions, so don't worry, everybody. But I do just want to go ahead and take this opportunity to let you guys know if you are thinking of jumping into the summer classes, there's still time. Some of our locations are closed, but other locations are still open. We do have some 20th anniversary because it's IPEX 20th anniversary, yay, uh, 20 years of changing lives. So we've got some 20th anniversary um, tuition reductions available. Please feel free to ask your admissions coach about those. Suzanne, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and posting in the chat how people can get in touch with an admissions coach, that would be amazing. If you are thinking about joining us for our fall uh, term, that's gonna start in November, um, you can get in on advanced standing now. So if the timing isn't right for you to jump in right now, think about joining us for November and speak with your admissions coach about advanced standing. Um, one last little thing here, and then I'm gonna go back to the questions. Um, Maria, if people do, if we, if we don't get to all the questions, because I can tell you guys right now, there's lots of questions still, and I'm going to do my best, but um, if we can't get to all the questions, is there a way that, or if somebody wants to work with you, is there a way that they can reach out specifically to you in order to ask that question or to actually work with you one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, absolutely. They can email me, and I think that um, I will... Uh, do you want me to share my email on the chat? That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to share my email. Please, please feel free to send me an email. And also, everybody out there, while Maria's putting her email in there, I happen to know, because she shared this with me, um, she has a free giveaway resource. It's 27 questions you should be asking yourself. So how would our audience today go about receiving that if they would like to ask themselves the 27 questions? Same thing. Just send me an email and say like, hey, I want to, I want the questions. I was at the IPAC webinar. So, you know, I want the questions. Yeah. Fantastic. Perfect. So see you guys. You took some time out of your day. You're going to get a little free resource there. Get your questions answered. Yes. Take some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if you, you can also join my mail list, I send coaching sessions every new moon. Uh, so every new moon, I send a really extensive um, email with a lot of questions and coaching exercises you can use to yourself and share with your friends, family. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, Scott, I do see your question. Scott is wanting to know, this, he says this one might be more for Heather than Maria. Um, and you're absolutely right. He's wanting to know how is IPEC different than other coach training programs, specifically CTI. We can definitely answer that one, but I am going to direct that one to an admissions coach. Um, but I would also recommend that you uh, go onto our site and you get the nine key considerations because the nine key considerations for choosing any coach training program, those are just going to be nine things that you want to look for in any coach training program. And the last page of the nine keys is an actual, it's the PDF download is a document where you can actually compare all the different coach training programs that you're considering. But an admissions coach can more specifically help answer that question for you. So it's a great question. And I didn't want you to think I was ignoring it. Um, so um, back over to you, Maria. Let's see here. We've got one here from Astrid that would like to know a little bit more, and I know that you spoke to this early on about how you just went out and coached everybody and your specialty really organically came to you. Could you expand a little bit more on that? Because Astrid is asking, how did you know where to find your audience and when did you realize that that's the particular area that you wanted to fo focus on? 
Okay, so the area, uh, as I told before, it was my clients coming to me, like asking for uh, help on their careers. Um, so I didn't decide, I, of course, like I decided like, okay, so now I'm gonna call myself or name myself a career coach. But before that, people were coming to me, right? Um, and the, the, what is the first uh, part of this question? Yeah, the other part was, how did you know where to find your audience? Oh, where to find my audience? Um, I think it was, uh, the start of everything was networking events. Uh, and I know that a lot of people hate networking events. I always love networking events. <clears throat> so the moment that I started to share or to be more comfortable sharing my story, the moment that I learned how to share my story, uh, I kind of started to understand like, oh, there is like a, a huge, I don't know, magic or it's easy to connect with people this way. So why I don't invite such and such for a lunch or for a brunch or why don't I host my own workshops? And, and that I also had a lot of help from my first coach. Um, so he helped me to to shape everything, to organize everything. Okay, so are you gonna host workshops? Let's do this and this and that. Are you gonna go to uh, networking events? Let's do like this and this and that. Um, so I think it was um, organic, but when I got to a point where I needed to organize and make this like a, a business or, and you know, like a, make something that would bring results, I had uh, help from a coach, a business coach. Great. Okay. And we've got another question here from Kim. Um, and I've seen it this come through in a few other people in different ways too. But Kim is wanting to know, um, how do you primarily work with people? Meaning, do you only coach by phone? Do you do face to face or through video or in person? Like, what are you most comfortable with? Um, I think phone, it's the easiest. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it is the easiest. Um, and I'm really comfortable. But sometimes it's almost too comfortable. Uh, so this year I had a client that she was like, hey, this is exactly what I want. And she didn't even ask like price or anything. She was a referral, a recommendation. So she really wanted to work with me, but she had one condition to have in-person sessions. And I was like, oh, I don't want it. I don't want to have to go there. <laughs> but it was an amazing challenge uh, because it asks you way much more presence and you don't have like materials that, you know, at home you can maybe like, open a book or just like open my, my iPad uh, questions and, you know, like use all my resources, I have to be really ready. So that it's helping me to grow even more as a coach. So even though I'm really comfortable on the phone, I've been enjoying a lot being, uh, you know, offering um, in-person sessions. I love that. And I love that you immediately keyed into that the universe was basically like, oh, Looks like, Maria, it's time for you to grow again. So we're going to do this client. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. I love that. And just to everybody out there, that's one of the great things about being a coach. To Maria's point, you can structure your business along with your growth, right? So if you're not comfortable doing face-to-face, -face, don't. Just do phone. If you're more comfortable doing face-to-face -face than phone, then do that. Mm -hmm. Um you get the luxury of, of doing it however you want. For me, I only do by phone. And if somebody wants in person, that's for me, that's a VIP day because I also factor all my travel in. And to Maria's point, I don't have any of my safety stuff around me. Like my very first client, I sat on the floor. I had all my IPEC stuff open around me in case I needed it. <laughs> and that's okay. And it works the same way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, I got a few businessy type questions here around how do you structure things like um, just your business stuff, like your coaching agreement, your sessions, all of those things. Is there any 
secret sauce that you can uh, give people in the audience about any of those items? No, my coaching agreement, it's the one that you will find at IPEX um, student por portal. Uh -huh. And I've never changed it. <laughs> it, it works fine. Um, no secret sauce, everything's there available for everybody. Yeah, IPEC has so much stuff. Like I work at IPEC and I went through the program prior to working at IPEC, but I've been here, I think seven years. There's still stuff in the student center that I stumble across it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this has been here the whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. um, Livia is saying she, that she can't find Maria's email. Um, Suzanne, if you wouldn't mind, can you grab that and put it um, back in the chat? so that uh, everybody can see it. It might have just scrolled uh, too far up for you, Livia, but don't worry, we'll take care of it. Um, so thank you for asking for what you needed, Livia. Um, Shelly is wanting to know, what are some of the typical types of, uh, she says issues, I'm gonna use the word challenges. What are the typical types of challenges your clients come to you with for coaching? Um, Lately, a lot of life challenge. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, like lately, I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it's all the eclipses and Mercury retrogrades or whatever. People just come to me like, hey, my whole life is a mess. Help me. <laughs> but before that, it was really like, I don't feel confident, confident as a woman or as a minority. So I was at working a lot on the diversity, um, especially for um, corporate professionals. Um, how do I feel more confident, you know, being uh, a Latina? Uh, so this is what was going on and now it's more like life stuff. And that's why I'm keep saying like, it's really organic. It's something that you cannot control. People will find you and say like, hey, it's you. I don't care if it's career coach, if it's business coach, I need help and this is it. So it, it really changes, but uh, yeah, lately it's life coaching. I love that because also how we do one thing is how we do all things. And you spend so much time at your career that that is your life. So it makes yeah. total sense that that's what would be coming to you right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so well, if I can, you know, become more confident going to that meeting, maybe I can also, you know, become more confident on my relationships with my kids. And, and I think this is how people think and, and you will be able to help them in, on everything. Absolutely. Um, I think we've got time for one, maybe two, I don't know, but um, Alexandra is asking, um, were the coaching methods that you learned from IPEC profound to the core? Not entirely sure what she means by that, but that is literally the question that she emailed in. So um, okay. were the coaching methods you learned at IPEC profound to the core? Okay, I'm gonna ask like sharing something uh, really interesting. All my clients cry. <laughs> well, so I guess this, that answers your question, right? It, it, it is to the core. It is really tr like a real transformation. It is not uh, you being an account accountability partner for a few months. It's you transforming a person and going really deep if necessary. So yeah, all my clients cry at some point on our process. So I guess this is, you know, deep to the core. <laughs> I love that. That is, yeah, I don't think it gets any more profound than yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, now I'm like, oh, I think maybe I'm going to reach out to you for coaching. I want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Just cry it out. Cry Just it cry out. It out. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's probably a really good spot for us to close out today. We're just about out of time. Um, thank you so much, Maria, for being here and for sharing your wisdom. And everybody out there, everybody asked great, great questions. So thank you so much for asking those questions, for showing up today and playing full out because this call would have been really boring if you hadn't asked any questions. <laughs> so thank you everybody out there. If you wanna speak with an admissions coach, please feel free to reach out to us. Suzanne has put uh, that information in um, to the chats. 
Also, if you registered for this call, you're going to get a recording of the call. And with that, you'll also get a little reach out as to how to further connect with us. Um, so if you have any of those logistical questions, please feel free to work with an admissions coach. They're not salespeople. Nobody's going to try to get you to sign on a dotted line or whip out a credit card. They're going to answer your questions. They're going to help you figure out, first, is becoming a coach your best next step? Second, is IPEC the right school for you? If the answer to either one of those questions is no, that's completely fine. So there's like zero pressure. So please feel free to go ahead and reach out and speak with an admissions coach. Um, and again, Maria, you are just awesome and inspirational and delightful and you're super busy. So I really, from the bottom of my heart, wanna say again, thank you so much for spending this time with us today and for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with everybody out there who's really thinking about starting their own journey into becoming a coach. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everybody, for spending this hour with us. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, if you came to this webinar expecting numbers and right answers and yes or no, this is really not what coaching is about. So get used to it. Just, yeah, just make sure you work consistently and you are serious because you will reach whatever you go you set to yourself. IPEC will give you the rest. Just work consistently. This is it. And thank you so much again. Love it. Thank you. And to everybody out there, as always, I wish you a life and a profession of your choosing. Have a wonderful week, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you in class soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.